take your seats. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Um, whoever is on my sound, let's see, I'm trying to think. Should I go a bit louder? Because I'm from using my voice. So I don't want to sound like an intercessor. Do you know the intercession voice? How are you, my brother? <laughs> okay, for me, the challenge is I sing a lot. So, okay, let's begin. But I love that voice nonetheless. Um, the ones who amaze me are those with that voice and then they can sing. I, I, I don't get it. Chandler Moore, guy with an intercession voice, but he can sing. Pastor Gift. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Today I want to explain to you something about our assignment as a ministry. The last time we had a special service like this, we talked about our physical house. But today I want to talk more about our spiritual house. So, join me on this journey. Hebrews chapter 11. And how it came about. If you guys know, I'm teaching on wisdom and I was teaching quite well. We were teaching quite well. Today I was supposed to do uh, the next step. But nevertheless, I had a dream this week. And in the dream, I was being reminded something about our assignment. And I thought, Lord, should it wait? But then the urgency kept building. So we decided on the service being like this yesterday. So everything was changed. Like we taught praise team, oh, whatever you rehearsed, we've changed it. We, taught it. we changed everything. When I say everything, I mean we changed everything. But I've got a good team in all areas. So now, um, when we are done, you'll understand why we're called what we're called. But perhaps let me give you a bit of a background. So, what might shock you is that City of the Lord Church was not our first name. Are you ready for that? Our first name was not City of the Lord Church. It wasn't even our second name. <laughs> Theory of, our Lord, of the Lord Church was our third name. The second name was City of the Living God. That wasn't our first name. That was our second name. Can I give you a bit of a background? So, the first name we ever had was not City of the Lord or City of the Living God. Some of you may remember. The first name we ever had was New Jerusalem Family Church. <laughs> that was the first name. Now, <laughs> so the song would have been New Jerusalem Family Church. <laughs> Established on earth. <laughs> Guys, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Pastor Daniel used to make fun. He would call us the NKJV church. <laughs> but guys, it came from somewhere. I had a vision. Don't look at me like this. So what happened was, we went to register the name. And some of you, if you know your history, there was a controversial church years ago. I think, um, I'm not speaking about whether the church was right or wrong. I'm just telling you that it was controversial. So there was a controversial church years ago called, I think their nickname was Lumpa. I think they're still there, especially in Congo, led by Alice Leshina. Now, I've got my own views, which I won't say. So now... One of the names that church used was Jerusalem, something like that. I think they called themselves New Jerusalem. So because of that, 
the moment we went to register as New Jerusalem Family Church, we immediately received no. Because it was like there was something that happened. The government under the late uh, President Kaunda banned them. So meaning that name was banned. So now that our our name came from Hebrews 11 verse 25. Verse 25. Are you there? You will see as we go on. So now So our name came from Hebrews 11, verse 25. So it says, is that the right verse? No, it's Hebrews 12, right? It's Hebrews 12. Uh-huh, from verse 22 to 25. So you guys who are sitting in front, you couldn't whisper to me. You also didn't know. <laughs> so Hebrews 11, Verse 22 says, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. So we figured if the heavenly Jerusalem part didn't work, we might go with the city of the living God part. So the next name we went with was city of the living God. So the song would have been, the city of the living God established on earth. So that was our name. And then we, just when we thought we were done with registration, we had already started using that name publicly. Another church decided to use the same name. There were not people far from our circles. They knew us and they knew we were using this name. So they went to quickly register with that name. And so they became the city of the living God. So... There were a few controversies about it. Nevertheless, I was reading the Bible one day and I found Isaiah 60 verse 14. I found Isaiah 60 verse 14. And Nisha was in pressure. And this is what it said. It said, also the sons who afflicted you shall come bowing to you. And all those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord. Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So I knew that it would be a mandate for dominion. And we continued in that regard. And over the years, we've been known a lot for dominion but also especially as a teaching ministry because one of the verses God gave me, before studying the church, I used to have one topic. Every sermon was on the Holy Spirit somehow. Then when the ministry began, God gave me this verse. Are you guys enjoying the background? Those in front, what verse did he give me? Mark 6.34. I was about to say Matthew. <laughs> The Bible says, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. So when God gave me that verse, I focused on teaching many things. That's why I can now teach topics I never could teach before. Do you know we've had a powerful service before where I taught on the importance of attendance. That Sunday shocked me because I, was, I went to the... I went to my office thinking, ish, people came to church and all I taught was attendance. And then this person came, Pastor, I've been depressed. But when you were speaking today, you were speaking to me. In my head, I was like, how? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that was my word, Pastor. I said, which one? And so I, I began to focus on teaching many things. Then I had a dream. And in that dream, God was speaking to me. And he says, do you remember what I told you your services were? I said, yes. And he says, your services were all themed the New Jerusalem experience. And he says, you've been known as a teaching ministry. But he said, that's a secondary assignment. The first part is an experience. And he says, I want you to revert to that style. And I woke up, and when I woke up, the room was just full of glory. 
all I was just feeling was all oh, the glory. At that point, if you asked me for money, I would have given you. Because <laughs> all I was feeling was the glory. And so, let's now have a bit of a background. So, Hebrews 11. And I want you to see something that made Abraham special. I want you to see verse 5. Actually, let's start from verse 8. Hebrews 11 from verse 8. Are we ready? For the next 30 or so minutes, please give me all your attention. Not part of it, all of it. If someone is texting you on WhatsApp, tell them, get behind me. Don't say Satan. (laughs) Just say their name. (laughs) Please, no, by the way, the pastor told me, ah. (laughs) When you're given a silent treatment for three years, ah. Just, Just tell them I'm busy for a moment. Some of you, you've, uh, let's just be honest, some of you have struggled to use your phone as your notepad. Just buy a notebook. Because you know, for you, once you open your phone for the notepad, to my notifications, to Nachiramo, TikTok, WhatsApp, this, 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 just, just get a notebook. No one will judge you. If you want, go get Sobi from the shop. Sobi and a big pen. If you've struggled to maintain your discipline. Amen. Okay, now let's go. So by faith, hey, let's start this from Genesis chapter 12. Let's look at it. Genesis 12. Guys, if you get this one, your life will never be the same again. (laughs) Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Uh I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. So Abraham got out of his country and he started looking for a land that God would show him. Now the question you would ask yourself is what land was he expecting in his head? In his mind, how did it look like? The Bible answers in the New Testament. Very simple. Was he looking for a land flowing with milk and honey? Was he looking for... Do you remember when he was with Lot and then... Lot and Abraham began disputing. And then Abraham just said, okay, look, just pick wherever you want to go. The guy knew he had the blessing. Him, he could go anywhere, whether it's a desert. He just thought, Lot, like, Lot, go anywhere. And Lot picked the place that looked green. The guy found himself in Sodom. Lot, there are a lot of lessons from Lot. One of the things you learn from Lot is sometimes no, whether it's with you or it's with the person you're following. Because Lot ended up um, living in a cave raped by his two daughters. I don't think that was his destiny. Let's continue. He should have just just given up part of his ship. If I was Lord. Let's go. Hebrews 11 verse 8 will show you what Abraham was looking for. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Uh By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Wait there. Abraham never built houses. The guy would always dwell in tents. You know why? In his heart, he was on a pilgrimage. He was on the move. There was something he was looking for that the earth couldn't give him. The next verse will tell you what he was looking for. Verse 10. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was not searching for an earthly city. Abraham was looking for the city of the Lord. That's what he was looking for. That's what he was searching for. Let's look at another verse. Verse 16. Maybe let's start from verse 15. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. Verse 16. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. 
maybe for context, should we start from 14? Let's start from 14. And then we'll have a context. For those who say such things, declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Uh huh. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Why isn't God ashamed to be called their God? Because of what they're desiring. What are they desiring? A heavenly country. Ladies and gentlemen, Sometimes we get so engrossed in the things of this world that we forget that there is a heavenly country that we should desire. So yes, uh, do your thing, you know. Achieve what you want to achieve. Build what you want to build. Drive what you want to drive. That amen was too loud. But the moment that becomes it, And there will be a challenge. Everything in you should see all these things as temporal, temporal comfort as you await the real deal, which is the heavenly country, the heavenly Jerusalem. Don't become like Esau. Esau, for a moment when he felt he needed soup, traded his birthright. He traded what was spiritual for that which was physical. And that's what sin gives you an opportunity to do. An opportunity to trade something spiritual for something physical. You can imagine somebody can give up their body or give up their principles and steal because they wanted a blackberry, which is now out of fashion. That's too temporal. There's something about a person who longs for a heavenly country. There's something about a person who recognizes that there's somewhere where we come from and it's a real place. It's not an imagination. It's not two people dancing on a cloud. It's actually a real place. It's a country. It's existing right now as it stands. I don't know what they're doing there, but people are probably, maybe one or two are watching this service. But I'm just saying it's literally a real place as in it's a real place. You've got 10 seconds. Share with your neighbor what you think they're doing in heaven right now. Want to know who's in deeper dimensions between, <laughs> between the two of you. Ha! It's a real place! Woo. And, and you know, what have they told you? <laughs> Others are doing like a dance routine in heaven. <laughs> wow. Okay, did any of your neighbor give you like a very interesting answer? Where like, mm, guys are you? Like, raise your hand if your neighbor gave you a very interesting answer. <laughs> raise your hand if your neighbor gave you an answer which shouldn't be posted on Facebook. Like, these are not things... <laughs> like, these are not things that everyone should know. Okay. I am going to my father's house. I'll be back. I am going to prepare... Many mansions. Natiaka Willa. Natiaka Willa. Natiaka Willa. Natiaka Willa. Natiaka Praise the Lord. So, there is an actual heaven. And people are doing stuff right there. And you know, for us who are believers, here are a few things I want you to know. Number one, do you know that we are already in the register? 
We are in the register of heaven. The book of life, we're already in it. Somebody say, I'm in heaven's register. So that's where I live. Let me just show you a few verses. Philippians 3 verse 20. Let's start from verse 18. For maybe from verse 17. But verse 20. When you see it, you're allowed to give the biggest amen you've ever given. And then the circumference of your mouth as you give amen <laughs> would determine... Um, I'm trying to think of what it would determine. It would determine how loud... Amen. Okay, let's just continue. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Okay, brethren, can we read it together? Brethren, join in following my example and not those who so walk as you have for a pattern. We read that one again. Eh? Something went wrong somewhere. One of your neighbors... Let's go. Brethren, join in following my example and not those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. Next verse. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who set their mind on earthly things. Then look at us. It says, For our citizenship is in heaven, for which, <laughs> for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So our God is not our belly. Our God is not our body. Our God is not our emotions. Our God is not money. Why? Our citizenship is of heaven. So you're in the register already. It doesn't say our citizenship will be of heaven. It says our citizenship is of heaven. That's why, don't you notice sometimes you're walking and then you just feel like a doof. Maybe that's the time they were calling the register in heaven. So they were like, Frederick. So you went like, present. <laughs> Praise God. Let me show you another verse. Whoa. I want you to see Ephesians. Chapter 1. Verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Are you ready? Can we read it together again? One, two, three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Let's read that one more time. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. What have you been blessed with? Where are these spiritual blessings? In the heavenly places. In Christ. So if you can find Christ, what have you found? The heavenly places. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians 2. And I want you to see verse 4. Something will change the moment these become your meditations. Verse 4. Are we ready? When you see it, give me a side eye. One, two, three, go. That God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. What has he done? Uh -huh. 
even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Next verse. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> so, where are you seated? With who? And where are your blessings? Where are your blessings? In who? In Christ. And where are you seated? With who? Hallelujah. So, listen, I want you to know that chair you're sitting on is now a royal chair. I hope you're hearing me. Those clothes you're wearing are now royal robes. What if you're wearing rags? They are royal rags. <laughs> what if your shoe has a hole in it? It's a royal shoe. Do you know how much a shoe for King Charles hole or not can, can sell for? Somebody said, I'm royalty. I'm, royal. I'm seated in heavenly places. In, heavenly. in Christ Jesus. Christ. Say, my citizenship, my citizenship is of heaven. Now, because your citizenship is of heaven, it's been embedded in every believer to long for the homeland because it's where you come from. So there are moments where you just have prayer sessions and that person, you're just saying, Jesus, can't you come back now? Can't you come back tomorrow? And even when Jesus will come back, what would the church cry? The church will cry, even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. There's a longing for the homeland. That's why we teach you some of, sometimes we teach you some of this stuff just to balance you up because if you're not careful, you can just be praying the whole day. But it's just that you need to eat here on earth. And that girl you want to marry, you need to pay the water. <laughs> and then we've also got an earth to dominate. We need to like finish the syllabus on earth. Okay. So that we see whatever assignment God has for us next. Let's look at a few other verses. So say, I've got a homeland. I've got a homeland. Now, I want you to see a few other things about yourself. I'll just read you a few more verses. Psalm 84 and verse 4. Psalm 84 and verse 4. And I want you to, I want us to read it from the Amplified Classic Version. I'll read it, and then I'll tell you what we'll focus on. So what's your focus? Heaven. What's your goal? Heaven. Maybe before Psalm 84, can we have Colossians 3? Colossians 3 from verse 1. It's a verse I wanted us to see. In Colossians 3 from verse 1. This will help you understand your neighbor. It will help you really understand why your neighbor prays the way they pray. And why they worship the way they worship. Just in case you never understood them. So say, neighbor, you're about to understand me. Here's what it says. Some of you said that with too much passion. So it says, if then you are raised with Christ. How many of you have been raised with Christ? Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Next verse. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh -huh. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Verse 2, other translations don't say set your mind. Others actually say set your affections. So do you see why we get emotional about heavenly things? It touches us. Because that's where our affections are. They are on things which are above the most emotional things that should touch you in life is not that series you were watching the other day. I've been on a campaign. I want to start, personally, I want to start shedding more tears, but I've been shedding them in my heart. But uh -uh. there are some people here, you know you have them in abundance. But someone can shed a tear because uh, Shupiwe was mistreated. <laughs> and so when they were watching Shupiwe, they felt bad. And then... 
in the presence of God, we are singing, my eyes have seen your goodness. The tears are nowhere to be seen. No, guys. When we're having, we're having a men's meeting, so men, we are going, that, that day, we are going to worship until we cry. All of us. All of us are going to cry. Can the men say amen? amen. I wanted a thunder answer. I said, can the men say amen? amen. Hallelujah. As we were going to have a worship meeting. <laughs> and we'll just sing emotional songs. We'll start, I once believed that love was romance. <laughs> we would do so. And please, let me know if you've got a neighbor who's been stiff during worship. Just silently whisper to me. I'm going to go start. Uh, the next session, I'll move with the guitar. I'll come sing where they are sitting. I'll start, Lord, we love you. Me and my neighbor over here, we truly love you. We then give you the mic. You sing off key, we put it on TikTok. Okay, let's continue. So you must set your affection on what? Things above. That's, so for COL, that's what I expect. Things that are heavenly should touch you. You hear that there is a soul who's not saved, it should touch you. You hear that there's controversy in the nation because this one did this. It should touch you. What should touch you is their salvation. Not yet the one busy contributing violence. The violence should not stop. We are here for the violence. No. COL. <laughs> so my affections are set on things above. Say it, heavenly things move me. Heavenly things move me. And for me, there is no one who can ever pretend. Uh, there is someone I was mentoring who was a serious introvert. And I mean serious introvert. Introvertedness on rampage. And then one day we were having a meeting and I think we were just dancing at home and some of you are there. God told me, say, anoint her with oil. I'm about to do something. So now, I'm, I'm not usually moving with like anointing oil. You guys have heard my doctrine. So I had to get cooking oil. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, she obeyed. So we started anointing. We were anointing her phone rings. Some of you were there, remember, right? Her phone rang. And I'm not usually the type to say answer. And I said answer. And so she goes to pick up from out, the phone from outside. We were in shock afterwards. Introvert. As in, we're all wondering what's going on. Apparently, at that moment, she received a call from one of the top 10 banks in the world. And she was hired. Now, if you scream for that, You scream when you get an A. And then Uku, uh, <laughs> Precious is busy. Lift Jesus higher. Yeah. Ah, yeah. ah. No, no, no. Then where are your affections? Your football team scores. We never hear the end of it. <laughs> the ladies are saying I should rest on that one. Your football team scores. Your life is changed. <laughs> you are feeling back pains. The back pains go. You do somersault after somersault after somersault. Your football team loses. You've got a temper. But a saw backslides and it doesn't bother you. No, not in this city. Set your affections on things above. So I'll be watching your statuses when your football team wins. And it's easy for me now because my team doesn't win. So I've <laughs> I can talk about these things with ease now. With ease. I'm unbothered, unperturbed. My focus is heaven. Heaven is the goal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 84 <laughs> and verse 4. <laughs> Psalm 84 
So the Bible. <laughs> The Bible says, <laughs> by the way, in case, you, in case you wanted to know, the, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So there's a, lot of hev- there's a lot of joy in heaven. So if you're too serious, do you know where, okay. So <laughs> according to Jesus, this is not me. According to Jesus, do you know where there's gnashing of teeth? Psalm 84 verse 4, the Bible says, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are those who dwell in your house and your presence. Come on, say, I dwell in his house. I dwell in his presence. And it says they will be singing your praises all the day long. Next verse. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied. And so you now understand why that person is always humming as they are walking, right? Like for them, every moment is... Oh, so what happened? Okay. You are true. They even remember where they ended. To your word. Because it's just, it, it just comes naturally when you dwell in his presence. And it says, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man whose strength is in you. In whose heart are the highways of Zion. Imagine in his heart there are the highways of Zion. Do you remember in the book of Genesis 28 when Jacob slept between a rock and a hard place and then the Bible, literally, right? And then the, the Bible, and then the Bible tells us that there were highways, there were ladders and angels were ascending and descending. But do you remember Jesus saying that what, what about in the day you will see angels descending and ascending on the Son of Man? Now imagine if in your heart are the highways of Zion. You know what Zion is? Zion is the city of the Lord. Imagine in your heart are the highways of Zion. And then, here's what it says about these people. Next verse. Passing through the valley of Bakha, or weeping, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also fills the pools. Meaning these people whose hearts are on Zion, as they are passing through this earth, as they are journeying through this earth, they meet a discouraged person, they encourage them. They meet they, they meet a person who's destitute, they empower them. Meaning as they pass through the valley of weeping, there's something they are doing to it. So they are not just, as much as they are focused on heaven, they are doing something about the earth. And they'll keep doing this until guess what will happen one day. Next verse. They go from strength to strength. So these guys don't have a dry season. These guys don't know a dry season. They don't know, they don't get filled and then they're empty. They're not the kind of believers who today they are filled, the next day they are empty. No. These are not the kind of believers who are constantly backsliding. Guess what happens? They go from strength to strength. They increase in power. So these go from strength to strength. They go from faith to faith. They go from glory to glory. And then guess what happens eventually? Each of them, boom, one day will just appear before God in Zion. Like what happened? How am I here? You are too much for the world. Your momentum was too high. Gravity couldn't hold you. So what happened? Boom, I just appeared before God in Zion. That's how these people are. So that's why we are concerned about the world we live in. Because we need to, we're, we're, not, living, we're not going to leave this world because it's defeated us. We we'll leave this world because we've defeated it. We're, leave, we're going to leave this world tired, like we're done. We've accomplished anything that can be accomplished. We've won all those we can win. We've preached to all those we can preach to. Well, at the same time, having all the money we can have. It's important. They need to know we're from Zion. (laughs) We've done everything that can be done on earth. You've built the houses. You've married the girl. You've... uh... (laughs) I'm just quoting Jeremiah. (laughs) I'm literally quoting Jeremiah. You've shown, you've, you've taught us, you've become couple goals. I release that blessing of couple goals upon you. You're pretending, but deep inside you want. Say glory. <laughs> okay, can we have our final three verses? Can you imagine we're only left with three? Three for today. Are you beginning to understand a bit more why we're called the city of the Lord Church? So now, I want you to see 
what role do you play in this city? Now, here is, this part is a revelation. Meaning, to get this part, you need to focus. This is the part where I say, behold. So, focus. If you've never focused in your life, focus now. Let's go. What is this city? First Peter 2 verse 5 says, You also as living stones. Do you now see why when you're speaking in tongues you sound like the Victoria Falls? It says, you also as living stones. <laughs> okay, some are getting it now. <laughs> So what happens when the pastor is young. <laughs> you were too focused. So it says, you also as living stones. So intercessor, you now know what to, what to say when leading prayers and they are too quiet. Come on, you are a living stone. I need to hear you, Mosi Otunia, today. <laughs> so you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. So do you know that you are a stone? You are a stone, you are a stone, and then what's happening is that we are all, you are being built into a spiritual house. Whose house? God's. And then what else? A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. If you read in Hebrews, you realize that one of the greatest sacrifices is through our praise. That's why we must praise. But you are a living stone. You are not just any person. And you are being built up into a spiritual house. All of us put together are forming this spiritual house. Keep that in your frontal lobe as we go to the next verse. <laughs> no, 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 my friend. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Revelations chapter 21. Have you made sure the living stone part is in your frontal lobe? Yeah. What's your mental cue? How are you remembered? <laughs> What's your tunia? <laughs> Can I hear you, Monsieur Tunia, for 10 seconds? <laughs> Why are some of you changing your accents? Speak in tongues in your mother accent. Some of you, when you speak in tongues, some people sound British, others sound West African. I need to hear you sound Tonga when you're speaking in tongues. <laughs> One day you sound like a Zionite. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Now the Bible says, now I saw a new heaven and in the sons and daughters convocation, we are going to reach this part because so far I think we ended Jerusalem when Jesus came because I want us to do a bit of eschatology there. It says, I saw a new heaven, a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Next verse. Then I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That's why you see the revelation there. It means that the city, as much as it will be a physical city, is beyond that. Because it means that the city is made out of certain stones which may not necessarily be physical. That's why when John sees the city, the next thing he says is prepared like a bride for a husband. And the next verse will show you. Where did, where did the men come from? Verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. This city has got a physical element of it, but there is a spiritual side to it. The spiritual side to it 
is based on the stones that are being used to make this city. And guess who the stones are who are being used to make this city? The very ones who are the bride of Christ. That's why this city is prepared like a bride. Ladies and gentlemen, there will come a time when God and his city will shift from heaven to earth. And this city will be called the New Jerusalem. And there are a few things the Bible tells us about it. Now this part, I'll read you the verses. It might confuse your, uh, your, your theology. But I'll explain it in the sons and daughters convocation. Look at how this city is like. Revelation 21 verse 22. It might confuse your theology. You'll be shocked. And I'll, I'll, and I'll make sure I leave you the mental cues. So that you attend the convocation. It says, but I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I saw no temple. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. What else? 23. The city had no need of the sun of the moon to shine in it. Would there still be a sun and a moon? Yes, but it won't shine for that city. You'll see as we go on that there will be other... Okay, let's move on. It says the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. I wrote a song in 2014 called Beautiful One. In case you've been googling it. This is a beautiful one. And the second verse goes, there's a part that goes, I heard of a city that needed no light, for it's illuminated by the risen Lord. Why back of scripture? Don't just be singing problems. Why back on my scripture? Let's go back. <laughs> and then, now this is the part that will confuse your theology. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. You know where the challenge comes in? Who are the kings of the earth who will be coming to bring to the city of the Lord? So that shows you that will be other people on earth. <laughs> who are not living in the city of the Lord, but they'll be coming to visit. We are reading the Bible. <laughs> let's read the next, no, maybe let's read it again. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Next verse. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, there shall be no night there. In that city, there will be no night. Maybe that's why there are certain cities on earth that have had those experiences. Maybe it's to give us a foretaste. You know there are some cities where for some time, darkness doesn't come, and then for some time, light doesn't come. Let's go on. They, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But they shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh -huh. I think I have left you thinking. Now you see why you need to attend. Let me now give you a few points. I want you to understand that the city the new Jerusalem will come down on earth from heaven. God himself will tabernacle with men. There will be no need for the sun. That means earthly resources will be replaced by heavenly resources. God and the lamb will be the temple. That means the presence of God will be so evident and so direct. Kings of the earth will bring glory to it. I want you to understand now, ladies and gentlemen, 
if this city is futuristic, then why are we calling ourselves the city of the Lord Church now? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. This is the part where you get it. For it is impossible. I know I've given you a lot of verses. I hope you've written them down. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tested the heavenly gift. Tell your neighbor it's possible to test the heavenly gift. <laughs> and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Uh huh. Verse 5. And have tested the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. It's actually possible for God to use certain people as a fortest where they can test of powers which is of the age to come. Do you want an idea of how this fortest will look like? There will come a time where there will be a fortest and this is how it will look like. Isaiah 65 verse 19. I had promised you how many more portions of scripture? Three. Is this my third? Okay. It will be, it will be the penultimate one. The Lord will forgive me. Verse 19. I know I'm giving you a lot today, but a lot of what I'm giving you will help you understand. We'll have series on each of them. It's okay. But I want you to see this. I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And as you are seeing this, I want you to begin to see your life. Hey. I'm about to read verses some I've never read. I'll rejoice in Jerusalem. This is speaking about a certain age that will come. It should be, it's an age to come, but it will be a foretaste of the city. And I believe that you and I can have a foretaste of this. We read, I'll rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days. I declare over you, in Jesus' name, will not have infants live in a few days. No, an old man who has not fulfilled his days, I declare over you, your destiny shall not be cut short. You fulfill all your days. <laughs> For the child shall die 100 years old. But the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. You guys want me to declare of you? How many of you want to live above 100? Guys, why, why don't you like the earth? What's wrong with you? Why don't you want to live over 100? It's hot. No, guys. How come people are not saying amen to this? I decree and declare over you. You shall live over 100 in Jesus' name. Should the Lord tarry, and not like living where you're not enjoying, you enjoy every day of your life. Yeah. Any person listening to me who's got something in their body that was going to cut their life short, or maybe something was arranged by Satan to cut your life short, or maybe the conditions of how your body has worked, it's worked in such a way that it might cut your life short. I rebuke that. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I speak life and life forevermore. That's a blessing I speak over you. You will not be a victim of, of wicked men. You will not be a victim of evil men. You will not be a victim of unfortunate circumstances. You shall not be a victim of car accidents. You will not be a victim of any of those things. No plane accidents, no car accidents, none of that stuff for you. These words I've spoken are law. Anyone, even if a person was going to die the next day, and they join our church today. These same words fight for them. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. It says, They shall build houses and inhabit them. You are building houses. Amen. Not one house. You are building houses. Amen. And you are dwelling in them. Amen. You've got the blessing of enjoying what you've worked for. Amen. For so many years, People work, work, work. The pension goes to other people. They don't enjoy their labor. Some people die before they touch their labor. Not you. You enjoy the works of your hands. 
you shall look at the works of your you will cry tears of joy because you look and say wow i'm living my dream your dreams become reality in the name of jesus they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit your businesses are successful remember for them what they used to do mainly was planting in whatever area i decree and declare you are successful in business you are successful in your ventures your career is successful in the name of Jesus. Next verse. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. That curse of where anything you're investing in goes to others. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. For, the, for as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Listen, even if you feel you're a late bloomer, you still have a long way to go. You are enjoying the work of your hands. You are eating the good of the land in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been believing God for a godly marriage. I decree and declare the right person, the right person finds you. You find the right person in the name of Jesus. You enjoy some of you shouldn't have, you, have, you were saying amen in advance. I saw to my little kids, amen. Here's what will happen. Are you ready for the next part? Verse 23. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. I declare over you, the children you have now, the children you have in the future, they are not troublesome. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. I said your children shall not be troublesome and your children are not troublesome. If you've got a child right now who's been troublesome, I decree and declare that the Lord locates them. The Lord locates them. They have an encounter with the Lord. You've got a brother, you've got a sister, you've got an uncle, you've got an auntie. I decree and declare the Lord locates them in the name of Jesus. Let's continue. <laughs> it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Some of you have been saying, Father, I've been praying, I've been praying. Here is what I declare, and I'll use my language here. Some of you have been saying, Father, I've been praying, but I've not been seeing it. I've been praying, but I've not been seeing it. May the Lord God embarrass you. Here is what I mean by embarrass you. With a blessing so big that you will forget all the complaints you've ever complained. May the Lord God embarrass any form of unbelief in you and affirm every faith in you. Amen. Your prayer life is fruitful. Amen. You enjoy praying because your prayers are producing results. Amen. Before you even start, the it's already been answered. Amen. Your prayers are now thanksgiving sessions. Amen. Your prayers are now sessions of tears of joy because before you even ask, it has been answered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And he says, while they are still speaking, I will hear. Your declarations do not fall to the ground. Your affirmations are not mere words. Because you are from the city of the Lord. You are from the place where when you speak, <laughs> things materialize. You are from a realm that created the earth. You are from a realm that creates in Jesus' name. Verse 25. It says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. Dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Even places which are dangerous, workplaces which are dangerous, jobs which are dangerous, things that communities which are dangerous for you, they are harmless. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Here is the final one Isaiah 2, verse 2. Here is another fortest we can experience. Isaiah 2 verse 2. Let's go. And it shall come to pass in the latter days. Say we are in these days. 
that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. Next verse. Many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus, the Lord sits you at the top of the mountains. The mountain of religion. They come to you to hear about God. They come to you to seek God. They come to you for prayer. They come to you for wisdom. They come to you for counseling. They come to you for deliverance. People of all races. People of all religions. People of all ethnicities. People of all status. They come to you to seek God. I declare you on top of the mountain of business. That in Jesus name whatever you put your hands on it prospers. Whatever you put your hands on there is a hunger for it. There is a hunger for it. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, there's a hunger for your products. You, your customers are increasing and increasing. Men are giving unto your bosom through your business. In the name of Jesus, you're on top of the mountain of governance. That in Jesus' name, people will put their trust in you. People will put you in leadership positions. Greatness is your destiny. In the name of Jesus, you are governing. You are ruling. You are ruling. I declare you're on top of the mountain of family. In Jesus' name, your marriage is blessed. And you marry well. You raise your family well. In the name of Jesus, you raise them well. You raise them well. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you're on top of the mountain of arts. You're on top of the mountain of entertainment. That in the name of Jesus, those songs you produce, they are sung. That in the name of Jesus, you go viral on every platform. That in the name of Jesus, those poems you write, they are read. That in the name of Jesus, those articles, those books... In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare you on top of the mountain of media. That in Jesus' name, you are the one controlling the narrative. The narrative doesn't control you. In Jesus' name, they want your view. They want your opinion. They want to hear what you have to say. In the name of Jesus, you are on top of the mountain of education. You are getting A's and A pluses. You are finishing the syllabus. You are reaching professorship. You are doing well in your career in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. And when it's all said and done, the greatest thing about you is that your life brings glory to God. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him praise. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the city of the Lord, church. And I've just told you our assignment. I just told you our vision. In summary, I want every eye closed for a moment. I want to make an invitation to someone who's not yet joined the family of God. Now, here's the thing. When you're born again, you know it. You know it because it's a decision you make. And you also know it by how you live your life. Some people listening to me may be religious, but they're not born again. Maybe every now and then they can do one or two good things like coming to church. But they know it deep inside that if Jesus came today, they don't think they'll make it to heaven. I don't want you to be shy about it. I don't want you to look at what another person will think. I want you to be very honest with yourself. Are you born again? Are you saved? Some of you may have backslidden off the path that you are walking on. And you are saying, today is the day I return. If you are in any of these two categories, God sent me for you. There is no need to waste any time. I want you to raise your hand right now. If you are in any of these, I'm seeing the hands. Just raise them. Raise them high. Don't be shy. Don't wait for your neighbor. If in your mind you are saying, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? It's usually you. So raise your hand. Those who raise their hands, just stand. I know there are a few more. There are a few more. I'm, I'm, I'm certain of it. Is there anybody else who would like to give their life to the Lord Jesus today? Or perhaps you've backslidden and you'd like to return to the faith today. 
you can raise you can stand as well some of you are saying let me go clean up my act first let me go do this first let me break up with this one first let me do this first no 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 just come as you are he will do that part for you i would like you to stand as well just stand be bold and stand wonderful those who've stood i want you to come to the front as they are coming if you'd like to join them join them yeah Somebody escort them, please. Escort these wonderful people. Ashes, please escort them. Lovely. Hi. I know there are a few more. Uh, could you check on your neighbor just in case they're feeling shy? I have returned. Cindy, I'd like you to sing that song. Cindy, hurry up. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Uh -huh. I know there are a few more. Come, come and keep coming. Come on, neighbors, evangelize. Speak. Your name. Be glory. I know there are a few more. Yes, your name. Be glorified. And yet, ministers, prepare yourselves. To the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Hey, I give glory to the lover of my soul. Wow, I know there are a few more. Keep coming. To the Lamb. There's always space for one more. I give glory to the lover of my soul. Your word is peace. Your word is true. Anyone else? We have returned to give you the praise for oh, the glory it all belongs to you. God who sits upon the throne. Okay. Now you guys have come, you're not smiling. You're making spiritual faces. <laughs> Is it because you're a spiritual house? <laughs> okay. I want you to hear me and hear me well. Firstly, is there anyone who wants to join them quickly before I give them the speech? This is a speech like no other. If you want to join them, run. Run. Don't crawl. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, what do you do if you can't walk? Crawl. Okay, lovely. I want you to hear me. Firstly, I want you to know that all your sins are forgiven. Ah, you should smile. So all your sins are forgiven. They're all forgiven. And if we were to look at the ratio... God is happier about you guys coming to the front than the rest of us. He's happy about us, but he's happy about you. Amen. So I want you to say this prayer with a smile. Are you ready? Okay. Lift your hands. And then I'm thinking, um, I'm not sure who's organizing the ministry team, but I'm thinking all the help we need can be here in advance because I want us to have at least one minute to pray for everyone. And then after we pray for you, we'll get your details. When we pray for you, some of you will fall. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So lift your hands and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I am here to confess you as my Lord. You are my Lord. Now and forever, you are my Lord. Amen. Now, some of you have had burdens. Maybe it could be an addiction or just a burden, a weight in your heart. As we pray for you, I want you to release that burden out of your heart. Okay? So every eye closed, just lift your hand. Someone will pray for you. Once you are prayed for, you walk down this side. Just look at me for now. Once you are prayed for, you walk down this side and your details will be gotten. Hopefully even from there. Okay. So Tim will lay hands on them for a minute and we're done. So say after me, say, Holy Spirit, fill me and take away all these burdens. Amen. Come on, Cindy. Let me hear you. 